Hey, everybody, we are live. I'm Jeff with eBay Addicts, and today I got a very special guest with me today. His name is Brian Tate. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Brian. Hey, folks, Brian Tate here. I'm a notary signing agent from Los Angeles, California, and uh, thank you for having me on the show today. Hey, man, I appreciate you taking time out of your day. I've been waiting like six months. I've been hitting you up on Instagram, and we're both busy people, so we have different schedules. So I appreciate you coming on and taking time out of your day to talk to me and our audience. So real quick, tell everybody a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and a little bit about what it is that you do. Well, like I said, I'm, uh, my name is Brian Tate. I'm a notary signing agent in Los Angeles. I'm 33 years old. Um, I've been an entrepreneur in some capacity pretty much since I was young. Uh, started with music and all the way to network marketing. I've tried almost any and everything to, you know, try to make money. So uh, um, in the last year and a half or so, uh, the reason for this interview is because I've, you know, stumbled onto something, a notary signing agent, I've had a little success with it, done pretty well. And um, yeah. All right. So so my man, Brian, he lives in Los Angeles uh, and he works as a loan signing agent. That's your full time occupation. This is your yeah. full time job. And the title of our video is going to be how Brian Tate makes one hundred thousand dollars a year being a loan signing agent. So if this is something that sounds appealing to you, if you're like, man, I would like to make one hundred thousand dollars a year. I would like to be my own boss and set my own schedule and make my own hours. You know, if this is something that would appeals to you, then stay tuned because we're going to go ahead and get into it real quick. So, uh, Brian, uh, go ahead real quick. If people don't know if they're a newbie, if they're totally out of left field, if they don't know what a loan signing agent is, kind of give us a quick uh, layman definition of what a loan signing agent is. Uh, a loan signing agent is simply a notary public that has the opportunity to work with in the real estate um, profession. Um you know, notarizing documents for real estate transactions. Uh, they pretty much just walk signers through a, a, a real estate transaction to ensure that there's no dates, miss, initials, anything like that. All the notarizations are done properly. And uh, they're pretty much the last line of defense in uh, loan closing. Uh, so whether somebody's purchasing, selling, refinancing, uh, doing a HELOC, whatever whatever the case may be, the notary signing agent is the last person that's with the usually with the signer and they ensure that the transactions run smoothly. Their job is to be an impartial third person um, to ensure that not only are the documents executed correctly, sometimes we also have to administer an oath to ensure that the person who is filling out these documents does so accurately, honestly, and um, you know, with integrity. So, yeah, guys. So if you've ever um, if you've ever bought or sold a home or refinanced a home, they need these third party impersonal people who are basically notaries. But they'll go through these loan signing documents and they'll say, hey, sign here, initial here, put the date here. And then they rubber stamp everything. And they they're the ones that check your photo ID to make sure everything is legit. So yes. it basically like in a basketball game, they would be the referee to make sure everybody's playing by the rules. They're yes. supposed yes. to be a third party neutral impart impartial person and i know you guys are thinking well that's boring i don't want to sit here and and sign sign documents and put my name and date but think about it like this you know a lot of times brian gets to be his own boss you get to set your own hours you get to kind of make your own work schedule and guys i'm telling you i've been following this guy brian for i don't know six months eight months almost a year and this guy's had months where he's made seventeen thousand dollars in a month he's had days where he's cashed in and made fourteen hundred dollars in one day working an eight or nine hour shift like think about that you clock out at 5 p.m and go home and you made fourteen hundred dollars in one day like not a lot of places can do that and you get to be your own boss and make your own work schedule so if that sounds really you know if I've got your attention, then stay tuned. That's what we're going to talk about. We're yeah, I've, live. I've done, I've, done a, I've done a lot of harder stuff for a lot less. So let's just say that. <laughs> I'm with you, bro. I've, I've worked in manual labor jobs. I've been on my feet for eight or 10 hours a day working in a factory. You know, I've had my experience where I've drove a forklift for 10, 12 hours a day. And that was like my occupation. But, you know, yeah. a lot of these. A lot of these manual labor jobs, a lot of these warehouse jobs that were around during the turn of the century of World War II are being outsourced. And you kind of got to get with the new rules of the game. The new economy is yes. things like what you're doing is a service-based business where you get paid on commission. Business. It's not like a regular job where you work 
40 hours a week, you know, you get paid strictly on commission. And the great things about it is you get to be your own boss. You get to make up your own work schedule. You know, you didn't have to go to college for six or eight years. You didn't have to have a bunch of student loan debt. And, um, you know, you get to, you get to, you know, there's no cap, there's no ceiling on how much money you can make. So yeah, I'm not sure if your think. listeners understood or paid attention to what you just said, but when you said service-based business, uh, you know, service-based businesses are phenomenal. Um, most businesses, you basically have to sell someone on, you know, your product or, you know, your product in essence. Um, but with service-based businesses, there's already a demand of people who need that service. And all you have to do is step in front of those people and let them know that you do that service. It's so simple. Um, you know, people who who are barbers, you know, that's a service-based business. Like everyone needs a haircut or their nails done, uh, things like that. Being a notary signing agent is a service-based business. It's in high demand because there's millions and everywhere you look there's real estate real estate is everywhere buildings commercial buildings homes you know real estate is everywhere so they need notaries to facilitate those transactions um last year i think well sorry so far this year there's been 6.49 million homes sold and that is not even inc including the millions and millions of people who refinanced during the pandemic as well um so every one of those transactions required a notary signing agent to facilitate the transaction yeah. And the cool thing is when you're working as a notary signing agent, you're not chasing a deal down. You're not cold calling prospects. You're not working as a real estate agent where you're hoping the deal is going to close. Everything's already been finalized. So you've already yeah. you, you've already got the, the money's in the bag, as so to speak. So you're not running around cold calling people, prospecting people. Think about back in the day when I was a kid, they used to have these guys and they would go door to door knocking on the door and they would try to sell you a vacuum cleaner or a television or a VCR. You know, if you guys don't know what a VCR is, you'd have to Google it. But these people would literally go door to door in 100 degree heat and they would. Hey, hello. Somebody there, somebody there. Hello. Exactly. As soon as you would open the door, you get the door open about two, three inches, and they would try to put the foot in the door to get to get in your door. They weren't trying to rob you. They were trying to do a, a thing to show you why you need your old vacuum cleaner was outdated. You need to get a new one. So yeah. those people were out here hustling left and right. And with Brian's gig, all the paperwork's already done. It's already finalized. He's not exactly. cold calling strangers. He's not no. knocking door to door saying, hey, just, can, can I interest you in a loan signing deal? I'm just it's already text done. messages. I, you can't probably can't see. I'm just getting text after text after text after text for opportunities to to do deals. It's, yeah, it's, and and so so the market's not saturated. If you're willing to get out and hustle, there's work out there to be to be had. Like I said, my man Brian laid fourteen hundred dollars in one day working as a loan signing agent. Some people don't make that working an entire week, working forty fifty hours a week somewhere. You know, think about if you were working a ten, twelve, fifteen dollar an hour job somewhere at a gas station attendant or it you know maybe you were working at starbucks or walmart or something you would make no fourteen hundred dollars in a day but we're yeah. live i just wanted to give a shout out real quick to the chat i wanted to say hey to Re ridiculous i hope i pronounced your name correctly uh harry briggs is here in the chat i want to give up, a quick up, shout up? out here to the mile high hustlers is here my buddy the early early bird picker is here uh resale daddy is here i wanted to give him a shout out and he says know. got my attention so Tell, tell everybody a little little quick backstory, a quick synopsis of how you got into this business. Because, you know, it's not like you've been a loan signing agent for 10, 15, 20 years. You just got started, I believe, in 2020, correct? So tell yeah, everybody correct. a little bit about your, your your journey and how you got started into this business. Okay, so I was I was working a, what some people would probably say, like, uh, at a prestigious company. Um, it's one of the one of the fastest growing startups. Um, founded by a billionaire who if i said his name i i can't say it because of an nda um but i was working for um do, basically in the construction tunneling um i got injured i damaged my c2 through c7 uh, at work um so i changed i had to i was forced to change careers uh, i went to a job that while, while it paid decent um it, it just wasn't fulfilling so uh, at work one day, I was just scrolling on YouTube, just random videos, and I saw a, a, a video of of a young kid, about 24, 25, had made like $5,000 or $6,000 in one month, his first or second month in this business, and all he had to do was stamp a couple pages, so it, it piqued my interest. Um, <laughs> I, uh, right. Yeah, like I said, it piqued my interest. Um, I did my own research and due diligence, and you know, I, I jumped right in. I took a course. 
um, on loan signings. I asked one of my friends or one of my coworkers uh, who used to be an underwriter at a bank to, to find out if this was legitimate and I, and she told me it was and it's kind of money that could be made. And, uh, you know, I was all, you know, I was all in. Um, and luckily I did make that transition and luckily I did, you know, start this process because the very next month after I took the course, um, I ended up getting furloughed from my job. Uh, my boss, you know, because of COVID, my boss told me, hey, you know, uh, we they had a, a bid basically for shifts. Um, and since I was like one of the last two people, since I had just made the transition uh, to that job, um, I didn't I'm, the bid that I put in did not get accepted in essence. So I was furloughed and I was told that, you know, once, you know, things open up again that I will be brought back and today that date still has not come so I mean, really? if I had hadn't you know by the grace of God you know stumbled across this I'm not sure exactly where me or my family would be at this moment so um yeah so that's how I got started um and um it took a couple months for me to, to get going just because I, the world was shut down at that moment but about June 2020 is when I started my actual business like june 1st the first day i could legally sign documents um i did a signing that day so i've been right. doing this signing since then right so tell people a little bit about your journey of because this is kind of what what our, our topic is about how did you go from making zero dollars to turning this into a six-figure business uh as a loan signing agent basically the first thing you need to get started as a loan signing agent is you have to get your notary commission in the state that you live in, correct? So kind of yes, walk correct. us through that process and then tell us a little bit about your journey of going from zero to six figures a year as a loan signing agent and how this is, what your personal experience has been like. Okay, for sure. So um, every state has their own different requirements. Um, you can go to the Secre Secretary of State's website, um, You know, just type in notary public, Secretary of State, um, on Google, then it will take you to your Secretary of State's websites and it will give you the requirements um, that are the minimum requirements to become a notary public. There's about 31 states that do not require anything. Pretty much you can just, as long as you're over 18, you don't have a felony, you can just submit an application and theoretically become a notary. Uh, in states like mine that are a little bit more stricter, California, uh, it does require a course. And then some states, like again, California is super strict. Not only does it require a course, it also requires you to take and pass a test. It's about a 30 question test or so, maybe 40 or 50 now. Um, questions you have to pass, you have to get like about 70% right. And um, that's pretty much it. And after that process of becoming, you know, becoming a notary, uh, you also need to get a couple other things like you need to get a background check done. Uh, the, there is a basically an organization called the NNA that basically govern. Well, I want to even say govern. They're pretty much the most well-known organization um, in this industry. So you need to obtain a background check from them. It's recognized by all the signing services, all the title companies, escrow companies. Um, you need that. You know, additionally to that, you do need um a couple you know like an insurance and a license so you need a bond that bond is basically protects the public in case of any negligence uh errors on your part as a notary but then you also need that but that protects the public uh, but you also need something to protect yourself in case of an error or an omission or maybe fraud from the person that you know that that's doing the signing maybe they you stole an id or you know stole somebody's identity or something like that and you don't notarize the documents you did your best to identify them and you know they bamboozled you so you need something to protect yourself as well so that's called errors and in admission insurance so with just those a couple of things you can pretty much you know after that get, get started in this business yeah guys i know sometimes it may be a little bit intimidating because you're signing documents maybe for a half a million dollar house three hundred thousand dollar house million dollar deals and you're just the impartial notary that's saying, hey, sign here, date here, initial here, but it's like you you still are have a, a, a responsibility, so that's why you have to have errors and omissions to cover your butt in case something happens. Would you? What yes. would you recommend that they get? Do they, you recommend they get the million-dollar policy, or which one would you recommend they get starting out? Um, as far as e &O insurance, um, most reputable title companies or escrow companies require a minimum of $100,000 worth of errors and omission insurance. And I know that's going to sound to most people are like, how, like, how much is that going to cost me? Um, 
it's it's not it's really relatively inexpensive there's companies where you could pay monthly or you could pay for the entirety of your term your notary commission in essence um i think for my hundred thousand dollar policy i think i paid like 150 dollars or 200 dollars, something like that it was relatively inexpensive in comparison to yeah the so, amount of coverage it gives you so i'm going through the process i let's say let's say i listened to what brian had to say i got my i went and applied to get my notary commission i got my background check i signed up with the nna i got my eno insurance and some of these processes, depending on what state you're in, especially with the holidays, it may take 30 days, 60 days or whatever, just for yeah. everything to clear. Because they got to do a fingerprint check. They got to do a yeah. background check to make sure that you're good. Make sure you don't have any felonies on your record. And I think the thing, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it has to go through your state capital. And, you know, the government moves kind of slowly. But yeah, if so you guys get the ball rolling now, you can be on track. So next year in 2022, you'll already have your ball rolling as far as your paperwork goes, as far as signing up with the NNA, getting your insurance, uh, right. getting your notary commission. So walk us through this process of how easy or difficult this may be. Uh, it's relatively simple. Um, so my my process basically took about 90 days or so, a little bit more than 90 days, just because the world was shut down when I my, when I started, I think I took my test in February 2020 and um, that process of like them grading the test, you know, to see if you even qualify to become a notary and like the, all those things that have to happen afterwards, your your fingerprint, your background check, all that kind of stuff. That whole process took about three months, because, like I said, because the world was completely shut down, like we were on stay at home orders. So um, there's a couple of things like, you know, like as a notary, you have to actually get sworn in in some states. So the every place to do that was closed. So like, you know, so yeah. again, it took, it took a while for for right. things to get going. But I, I, I'm hearing from other people who are getting into the business that, uh, you know, the, the timeline has decreased uh, dramatically. So, oh, okay, awesome. Uh, we're we're live, so I gotta say a quick shout out to the people in the chat. I want to give a quick shout out to Devela Flips. Annie is in the chat. I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Mir is here. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Yeah, give bro. me a thumbs up. I wanted to give a shout out here to my buddy BK from the Rockies is here. It says like, share, subscribe, and comment. And I want to give a shout out here to Ridiculous. I hope I pronounced your name correctly with the $5 super chat, bro. I oh, appreciate you got a super uh, chat on here. Let's go, man. I, I, I appreciate that $5 super chat, man. And, uh, you know, if you're new here, we have new guests like this on every week. And we talk a lot about financing and helping you increase your income and make more money. So um, my buddy BK from the Rockies says the NNA is a National Notary Association. Yes. And so uh, we had a question that says, what is the name of the governing body? So uh, we we talk. Go ahead and explain, elaborate, because this is your full time big. So yeah, that's, go ahead and explain that's the NNA. He, he already answered that. I think that person was answering the question. The governing body. That's the NNA, the National Notary Association. Okay, and we have a question in the chat that says, "How do you market your business?" So let's say you you you've applied, you've got your notary commission, you signed up with the NNA, uh, you've got your E and O, your errors and emission insurance. What's the next step? How do you market your business, and how do you go from zero to six figures a year as a loan signing agent? Okay, so um, most notary signing agents, they get their business from what I call two different categories. So uh, category or bucket number one is they're called signing services. And then the second bucket would be like direct business. So signing services is basically another notary public, another notary signing agent already established relationships with escrow officers, loan officers, title officers, real estate agents. They've already built a business that is so big that that person personally can't do all the signings that he or she is getting. So that person farms out or basically brokers um, his notary appointments to other notaries. So he or she hires other notaries to work um, for them, but not as an employee, but basically like a, a subcontractor in essence um, to sub out the work that he or she's getting. So most notaries start in that bucket. They get signing services where you get text messages and email alerts um, about signings in your area so there's there are what are called notary databases um it's kind of like yelp for notaries so let's say i'm a signing service owner and then i have an appointment in the zip code of 90305 i'll go to the different databases and type that zip code in and i'll look for notaries that live close to that because i want to ensure that if i'm getting a notary 
to do this appointment, I probably want the closest notary that lives to that area because I want to ensure that that person actually gets there. There's no, you know, delays or anything like that. I want to ensure that it happens. So most signing services look for the closest qualified notary to the signer. Signer. Um, so, and if they can't find a notary in that area, they basically send out. Um, if you ever done like Uber or Eats or any kind of like those like gig economy type things usually the alerts go to the the closest people first and then if they can't find somebody or when you get an uber like it goes to the first couple uber drivers that are around you if they can't find someone in that area then the ping right. goes out a little bit further and it goes a little bit further same thing same technology so like they go to the notaries that live closest to that area they can't find a notary the ping goes out to the notaries a little bit further out a little bit further out so you get to respond to those kind of texts and emails saying that you are available and then if you're accepted then they send you basically the documents so you can go to, to facilitate the appointment. Uh, there's a yeah. couple other things that you can do to um, kind of ensure that the signing services use you by building relationship with those signing services. You can actually call and let them know that you're available. Um, there's a bunch of different things that you can do to make yourself stand out um, to get those appointments. So that's basically bucket one. That's where everyone start, starts out. And then some people stay there. Um, right. you know, like they like to be fed and, you know, you know, they're happy with that. The other aspect or the other bucket or category is basically direct business where you go out and you establish your own relationships. You go into escrow companies, title offices, you go meet loan officers, title coordinators, real estate agents, and you basically let them know that you're a notary signing agent and that whatever you areas you cover. Um, so those are the two basically aspects. One is basically you're just sitting around and doing what's convenient for you almost. I mean, you can build that, you know, to, you know, pretty big as well, but it's basically like more of a hands-off approach where you just, you don't have to do any marketing. You don't have to do anything like that. You just sit back, kick back, sign up for as many exciting services as possible and just respond to texts and emails and calls. Um, the other aspect, like I said, is you basically taking a more proactive approach and kind of directing how big or how small, like you want to grow. Yeah. And so, um, Basically, in a nutshell, when you sign up for one of these loan signing uh, services, uh, they're going to do all the foot. They're going to do all the legwork for you as far as setting up appointments, getting contracts ready to go for you. But they don't do it for free. They take a, a percentage of whatever that signing fee is. So let's say yeah. hypothetically the signing fee, the whole fee would be, let's say it's one hundred and fifty bucks. Well, because they did all the marketing and all the legwork to get that to get that job for you. You may make $75 and the signing company may keep $75. But if you right. go directly to, let's say, the title company or you go directly to a mortgage loan officer and they give you that contract directly, maybe you'll get the whole $150 signing. But you're doing all the legwork. You're doing all the grunt work yourself of building up relationships. I mean, it's really important yeah. that you build up relationships and build rapport with people. Uh, it, you know, it's not just about, you know, looking at a, a screen and you just say, because uh, they're going to basically notify you and say, hey, Brian, are you available for five o'clock appointment at one, two, three fake street, right? Or Acorn yeah. Street. And then you're going to respond and say, yes, I can do it. Then they're going to fax over the information to you. And then you yeah. print out the docs and then tell us kind of what this entails. Do you meet the uh, person so, at a yeah, McDonald's so, or a Starbucks yeah. or in the parking lot or what? Go ahead. I, I don't so, know. Uh, typically, like I said, like if you're accepted for the signing, they'll, they'll uh, email you the documents so you can print them out. Um, and then you, you, your responsibility, once you're assigned the appointment is to contact the signer. Um, usually the general rule of thumb is within one to two hours of the notification of being accepted to confirm the appointment. Um, and then once you confirm the appointment, generally, if it's through assigning services, they will already tell you specifically where the client wants to meet. Cause they usually have a scheduler. That's how they know they, they have a, a person that gets paid hourly to schedule those appointments. So the escrow sends them the file and sends them all the documents. And then they call the client, schedule it when it's convenient, where they want to meet. And when you work with signing services, um, it's, it's a taboo thing to accept an appointment and then try to change the appointment time because the signer already talks to a scheduler or to their escrow officer or to their real estate agent. So they already told somebody, this is the place I want to meet. This is the exact time I want to meet because it's convenient to them. We're providing a service, so we're, we're basically, the ball's in their court. Um, and on the opposite end is when basically you are direct with the escrow. So there is no scheduler. Uh, 
uh, some escrow wait uh, i'll take that back some escrow officers are, are micromanagers so they will talk to the client and tell you specifically when the appointment is set but the vast majority don't they will basically just send you the file and they give you the person's phone number um and ask, ask you to call them to schedule the, the appointment immediately so your job is once you get the file is to either look on the documents and find their phone number um or if your escrow officer made it easier for you, they may send you the person's phone number and then you call yeah. them and schedule an appointment. Yeah. Okay. And then, so you would meet the that's person. Probably, and That's what I was doing right when, uh, when we had to pause before we started the live, because yeah. my escrow so, officer so, had to schedule an appointment. So you meet the person, let's say you meet the person at your house, you would introduce yourself and say, Hey, my name is Brian. I'm going to be doing your, your loan signing doc closing or documents today. Then you would go over all the documents, make sure everything is signed, dated, initial. And approximately how long does it take you to get through one of these loan signings? Um, it depends on the lenders. Every lender has a different um, amount of documents that they put in their file. Some lenders like Quicken Loans, <laughs> shout out to Quicken Loans. Um, their packages are a lot smaller and it's less documents to notarize. And then there's other lenders who will remain nameless um, that have so many documents for almost no reason. Um, so it depends on the size of the file. And it also kind of depends on the, the personality of the signer. Um, I typically bring out a few documents out of the loan package and go over those first, the ones that con are concerning the money um so that they kind of have a ballpark understanding of you know how much that they need to bring in or how much they're getting if it's a refinance um what their monthly payment is going to be and uh, you know those type of things so once i've gone over those three two or three things in the beginning generally most people don't have questions um so after that um so it generally takes about 30 to 45 minutes to go through like an average loan document um, if it's like a reverse mortgage or something else that may be a little bit more complicated, um, or if the signer has questions, um, then it can take a little bit longer, maybe an hour or sometimes like for like a reverse mortgage, cause it's the package is so big. It may be an hour and a half, two hours. Right. So you're there, you meet the person for a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, and you're in and out. So tell people real quick, Ryan, how they can go from, if they're an average person, they're sitting there on the couch. They're listening to you right now. How do I go from making zero dollars a day to fourteen hundred dollars a day as a loan signing agent? Like, give me the skinny on what I need to do. Is I'm I'm hearing it. My ears are perked up. Yeah. I'm paying attention. But what are, what would be like three tips or piece of advice of things that I need to do uh, so I can get out here and start making some of this loan signing agent uh, capital? So first is to sign up for as many signing services as possible. That way you have the biggest opportunity to start doing signings right away if you sign up for as many as possible you're eventually going to get the ball rolling once you gain you know whatever confidence you've you know where you feel like you're confident in executing the documents um then i, I the the next step is to basically transition from only doing signing services to at least doing both where you're doing signing service and direct business um if not completely going just direct so uh, having a combination of both or just moving to direct once you're confident is basically what's going to take your income from you know zero to a couple hundred maybe a hundred dollars a day to once you go like the combination to maybe 200 300 dollars a day and then eventually over time you can scale it up dramatically all right do you have any other tips or piece of advice to help our audience out to help them get started um you know just it's just about, it's just about confidence like once you understand the documents the 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 general thing that we do is you know notar making sure that the notarizations are correct um yeah. like once you understand like the basics of being a notary which is you you're going to learn in your notary class um it's just understanding that like there's there's only a certain level of of notary you can get like it's either the document is right or not if you either you notarize it correct or not so once you understand it there's like it's not like the nba where like another person is like the michael jordan of notary it's no michael jordan's notary is like everybody has the same stamp it's just making sure the documents are correct so knowing that right. every notary is basically the same and there's no one that's bigger or, or better than you in essence and you having that confidence and then you know, use that confidence to you know, to um, get out there. 
Right, right. Just like you said, there's no Michael Jordan of the notary game. It's just no. about how much work you're willing to do and how much hustle yeah. you're willing to put into this business. Because you guys got to remember, uh, Brian only gets paid on commission. So it's not like a regular job where he gets paid $15 an hour or works 40 hours a week. So therefore, his paycheck was, let's say, $600 for the week. He's getting paid at per per uh, closing that he does on commission. So uh, think about it similar to a real estate agent. We have a question in the chat says, do the signing services cost? So the signing services, they 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 get paid on commission just like you do. So when you get the yep. closing done, you get your cut and the signing services get their cut of the commission. So can you explain about how that works real quick? Yes, so so um, there are some companies out there that are predatory type companies that will try to dupe I would say uh, new signing agents into paying to be a part of their signing services, but most reputable signing services do not charge notaries to sign up. You could basically just submit an application or join um, one of the databases like SnapDocs. Um, and then once you do that, you know, you're pretty much good to go. You shouldn't be paying them. Uh, you're basically doing them a service by, you know, helping them, um, you know, facilitate their work in a sense. So no, you shouldn't be paying to join a signing service. Right. So uh, something I want to talk about real quick, guys, I have a link in the description below. So if you guys want to go and, and, and look this guy up, uh, his name is Mark from the loan signing system. So if you need more one-on-one -on -one, like hands, hand holding and coaching and people to kind of take you step by step in the business, uh, would that be a program that you recommend? I'm not I'm not saying this because I get affiliate commission. I'm just saying this. If you're new to the business and you want to get started and you heard what Brian said, how he made $17,000 in a month, he did this by signing up through this program. So tell them a little bit about what they would get with this coaching program through the loan signing system. Well, if you go to one of my channel, if you go to my channel and watch one of my notary videos, you click on that link, then it will be, it will be an affiliate link. It will be my affiliate right. link. <laughs> Don't go do that. Uh, uh, no, but I'm joking. But um, no, but like, yeah, that course is the course that basically taught me everything about, uh, you know, the whole process it, from A to Z. So uh, I have not, no nothing bad to say. Mark is a, an exceptional teacher. Um, you know, some people have information, but then some people are like good at teaching. Um, and there's some and, and, you know, there's the magical person that's good at both doing and teaching. And Mark is that person. So. Uh, is definitely a great resource for sure. Okay. Now, um, how much capital, because a reason why I love this gig is because, you know, I don't have to go to college for four or five, six years. I don't have to get $80,000 of student loan debt. I can fill out my paperwork, get my a notary commission, sign up with the NNA, get my background check. And in 60, 90 days, I'm off to the races and I can start working as a loan signing agent. But tell people a little bit about the startup capital that you need to get started, because there's certain equipment that you need. You need a printer. You may need a, a, a way to get your documents signed. What would be a, you need to have a, a functional car to drive to your appointments to meet the clients? What would be like a, a three or four or five things that you need to get started? How much does it get cost in ballpark figure to get started in this business? Yeah. So first you need um, an electric scooter. I'm just kidding. You need a, <laughs> no, I'm just yeah, kidding. You, yeah, obviously you have to be able to get from a uh, point A to point B. So obviously some kind of transportation, reliable transportation. But it really depends on like how resourceful you are. Uh, I do know a few notary signing agents that started out there like started from scratch and they didn't have a car. So they Ubered to their appointments. So it depends on really, really on how much hustle you have if you don't have a car obviously there's just a it, you know any any problem could be alleviated in that sense so um obviously you do need a way to get there whatever that way is whether it's your own car or somebody giving you a ride or uber whatever you need to be able to get to the person and you do need a way to get the documents so whether that's your own printer um you do need a laser jet printer not an inkjet printer to be able to print the documents is legally required to have a laser jet printer um but when i first got started i think the first two months i did not have my own printer um so if you get signings from like direct business some of the escrow officers will print the documents for you and um some signing services have relationships with like um like fedex and stuff like that where they can have the document sent to those locations you could just pick them up that's a little bit more rare but there are ways like like if you're 
I have zero dollars after I got my commission and I need to make money. There's if you're resourceful, you can figure it out. There's a way to way to get it done. All right, guys. Hey, I, I'm uh, Brian's in between his loan signing appointments, guys. He's a busy guy. They don't pay this guy seventeen thousand dollars a month to sit on his butt and watch, you know reruns of bugs bunny so we're going to try to keep this video right a little over 30 minutes long if you have any more questions or comments or you need help uh, i have his link you can send him a dm on instagram you go ahead and follow him on instagram and youtube tell everybody where they can go by and check you out and follow you on youtube and instagram i have your links in the description down below um so youtube i'm at youtube.com slash brian tate tv the brian tate and tv are capital um, I'm also on Instagram, building on building with Brian, and that's Brian with a Y. And you can also find me on TikTok, make money with Brian. Hey man, you know Brian, I don't know if I get a chance to talk to you again in the future, bro. But you got me motivated and inspired to go get my notary commission. I'm actually a a a, 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 a registered a real estate agent here in the state of Florida, so I'm kind of familiar oh, a little bit right. with the business. Yeah, but I've never got my uh, my commission to be a notary in the state of Florida. Uh, I had one in the state of Kentucky, but I have to start over again. But so, exactly. hey, man, I appreciate you taking time out of your business or out of your busy day to come talk to me because if we can just help just one person, if I can just help one person who's hearing my voice and hearing Brian's voice, and you guys can can go and sign up and become a notary agent, and now you're making an extra five or ten grand a month. Because you watch this video, then we did our jobs, you know. Yeah, so, sure. like, uh, like I said, if I, if I didn't stumble across that video on YouTube where you know the guy was, you know, his name was Calvin, if I didn't stumble across Calvin's video, then I probably would be doing something else right now. But, um, you know, I saw that and I was, I took action. So, uh, hopefully, there's one person out there, like you said, if, even if it's only one person, I hope that, uh, you know, we added value today and you know, we help somebody start a new career. Oh, for sure. If we can if I just help one person right now and got you started and you went from making zero dollars a month and now you're making 10 grand a month and you get to be your own boss and make up your own work schedule and set up your own appointments and you want to be a boss hog like my man Brian is in Los Angeles where you're making 17 grand a month. I mean, guys, that's 200 grand a year. There's no place you can go right now that's hiring where you can walk in off the street with no college degree. You don't need 10 years of experience and you're making 200 grand a year and you get to be your own boss and make up your own work schedule. And if you already have a full time job and you just wanted to be a loan signing agent on the side, I've seen guys that are out here hustling, working nights and weekends, making an extra five, six thousand dollars a month. Just doing it part time as a, as a side gig or a side hustle. So, anyways, go follow our guests. All the links are going to be down below. Do you have any final thoughts or words of wisdom you could leave our audience with, Brian? I, I always say this every time I close out anything. Uh, nothing changes unless you change. So, if you're sitting on the fence, to, you know whether it's this, whether it's eBay, or selling online, whatever, no matter whatever the case is. Um, again, nothing's going to change unless you change. So, start today. That what if you have an urge to do something else? You know, give it a shot. If you fail. Try the next thing, you know, just get back on the horse. Just never be afraid to get back on the horse. So, Right. Well, you know, being an entrepreneur is all about, you know, learning from your mistakes. And, you know, it's it's like, what do they say? If failure is never final, you only, you only lose if you quit trying. So you just got to try new things and see what works for you and what doesn't. And you have a very low, low, uh, low risk to get started, guys. We're talking five hundred or a thousand dollars to get started in this business, in a business where you can be making, you know, ten, fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars month after month after month, every month for the rest of your life, as long as you're willing to go out there and hustle. So anyways, go follow our guest. Our guest's name is Brian Tate. Follow him on YouTube and Instagram. And uh, I've been following this guy for six, eight months, almost a year now. So I've been watching you in the background. I've been like a little fly on the wall watching your, your journey, man. So, how, how did like, you first find my channel anyway? I found you on Mark. When you did that interview with oh, Mark, it was about nine okay. months ago. And yeah. with the loan signing system, he has his own YouTube channel, and that's how I found you. And okay. I, then I was like, I was like, man, I bet this guy has a YouTube channel. So I typed in your name, Brian Tate, and looked you up on Instagram and YouTube, and that's how I found you. And I've been following you ever since. So all sure. the links are down below. Go by and follow our guest. And a big shout out to you, Brian, for taking time out of your day to come talk to us and talk to our audience. And hopefully, if I just inspired and motivated just one person to help you on your journey to start making money on your journey from zero to six figures. Then we did our jobs. All the links to follow our guests is in the description down below. And go to go to Brian's channel, then click his affiliate link, 
and then you can sign up there. I think today is the last day to have a 20% off promo. I think the promo is called Cyber 21 or something, and they have a 20% discount on the training program. So I don't get an affiliate link. I'm just giving you guys a shout out to help you out. So go follow our guests. Until next time, I will see you guys tomorrow. I have a huge guest coming on tomorrow. The Cincinnati Picker will be here. And if you guys don't know him, he says, 200,000 subscribers in the reselling community. This guy's like a celebrity. So I will see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. So. You got to rock Eastern. star coming. Right, right. So I'll be on at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow with my guy, Cincinnati Picker. So I will see you guys tomorrow, uh, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Till then, go follow our guests and go pick his brain if you have questions. You guys have a great day. Bye, everybody. <laughs>